All right, so we're now looking at these different subroutines that are being called within graphics under the, uh, the if statements. Obviously, by the name, you know what they're going to do. But it's important for the exam that you understand how are they doing this. At this point, you might find it could be just easy to just read it yourself and you can probably figure it out on your own. If not, feel free to keep watching to see how they work. So the very first one it calls is the load file subroutine. So let's have a look at the load file subroutine. So first of all, we're setting file found and file type OK to false. We're then going to have a file name and we're going to allow the user to enter the name of this file. Of course, the idea is that they're going to enter a file that currently exists, we hope. So we now have a try and accept it in place to uh, prevent any error from happening. So as long as it enters a suitable name or you know, suitable data, a variable file in, which is going to be used to read the file name they've entered. So you can see whenever they enter into file name, gets .txt applied to the end of it so that Python knows to look for a text file called whatever the user enters. Okay. File found is now set to true. And then um, we can see header line is being set to file read line. So we're going to read uh, part of this text file, which is going to be stored into the variable header line. You know what the header line is, as we explained previously. Um, and you can see the very next line uh, allows us to split the items of data up by looking for the comma. So it knows each field in the header is being split. So between each comma is going to be a different item of data. This was explained previously as well. Okay. And these are all stored where they need to be stored. Then comes the easy bit really. We've got some selection which allows us to recognize the type of file we're looking at. Okay. And based on that file we're looking at, a different subroutine will be called. Okay. Um, so if you if if the file type is A, the, the subroutine called load ASCII image will be um, run. Otherwise, uh, if it is G, it's going to be load grayscale image. Um, and if it's none of them, it's going to display an error type. Okay. Um, I'll let you look into load ASCII image and load grayscale image yourself, but that that is give you enough detail there in terms of how how those images and how the file types are recognised um, using that. Beyond that, the rest of this subroutine is just just error checking, ensuring what happens if the user does enter a, an error uh, when they enter some input for uh, file uh, name. And that is essentially all that is for the load file subroutine. Let's go back to graphics to see the next subroutine we should look at. So the next one we've got is display image. Let's take a look at the display image subroutine and see what that does. Okay, so here's the display image subroutine. You can see here it's a fairly short piece of code. So it's gonna so it's gonna call a subroutine called print heading. Let's have a look at that one now. So the print heading subroutine just outputs whatever is stored in the heading. How easy. And we know what things are in the heading as well. Okay. We're then going to get a recognition of the, the heading length. Um, so you know, heading length is the length of heading. And then it says for position in range, one heading length plus one. And based on that range uh, and length of the heading, we're going to output the equal sign and uh, we're going to output the data shown. Okay, so that is the, the print heading subroutine. Let's go back to display image. It says for this row in range, um, header height, for this column in range, print grid, this row, this column, and with that. So the display image subroutine essentially takes all the random symbols that you see in those text files and places them into the appropriate position in the grid. Let's go back to the uh, the graphics subroutine. The next one is edit image. This is an interesting subroutine. Let's have a look at that now. So here is the edit image uh, subroutine. This one's fairly straightforward. Uh, I'll explain to you how it works, but you can have a look at the code. You can pretty much figure it out yourself here. Very, very straightforward. 
this subroutine, okay, essentially has a, a variable called answer and sets the empty string. Um, so it's not going to be n, okay. Um, and what essentially happens here is we've got two variables, one called new symbol and one called symbol, okay. And now we're going to set a while loop, which says while the length of symbol is not equal to one, of course, empty string is more than one. So we're now going to allow the user in here to enter the symbol they want. Of course, a symbol is only one character. So as soon as they enter that one character, it's going to leave the while loop, right? So they're going to enter the character they want to replace. So as you know, the image is made of various, various characters. All they've got to do is pick one of those characters, one of those symbols, and they can replace it with another one, okay? The next while loop says what symbol they want to replace the current one with. So we've said what symbol we want to get rid of and what we want to replace it with. Next, we use a for loop, um, or a series of for loops, to essentially replace the symbol okay so this is for this row in range uh for this column in range so you're essentially going you know by row by column and we're looking for every item of data every symbol um in this 2d array and we're looking right is this one equal to what the user entered into the symbol variable if it is we're going to hit the new symbol and store it in that space so essentially that replaces the current symbol with the new symbol, okay? And then it's going to call the display image to show you the new uh, image with your changes. Um, it will then ask you, do you want to make any further changes? Very simple, you either put Y or N. As you know, the while loop will end as soon as you put N into answer. So if you put N, it will exit and it will return that to the grid variable and make changes. Uh, let's go back now to the graphics subroutine. So back in the graphics subroutine, we've got just two more left. These are very, very self-explanatory. The next one we're looking at is save image. So here in the save image subroutine, essentially if you call this variable by using the, uh, the appropriate letter, it's gonna output this message. The current title of your image is, and it will tell you what the image is called, okay? getting that data from the header in the file, as explained earlier, okay? It's then gonna say if you want to use that as your current file name, you can enter Y or N here. If they enter N, it will ask you to then enter the new file name. Otherwise, it's going to now allow the user to have their file overwritten, okay? So whatever was currently saved in that text file, is now going to be replaced by the changes you have made. Now, essentially, the rest of that code is just to allow the, the file to uh, overwrite um, what is happening, and then it will close the file after. Let's go back to the graphics subroutine. Okay, and the final option. Um, this is not really calling a subroutine at all. Uh, it says, elif menu option is equal to x. Well, very straightforward here. If they've entered X, we're now going to set program end to true, which means we now exit the while loop and we go to this code here, which says print. You have chosen to exit the program. Do you want to save the image as a graphics file? So it just allows you to have that final choice. You know, you may have made some changes here. Do you want to just make any more changes? Say yes or no. And that is the end of the program. Obviously, it calls the save file, and that's it. And that's pretty much everything you need to know about the skeleton code. There are a few other areas I didn't really look into. Feel free to go through the rest of the code. Now that the main parts of the code have been explained, the rest, this should be fairly simple to understand.